My name is Ashley, and this is Let's Talk Dispatch. I do. <laughs> You're gonna do it. Do it really well. And I believe the world needs more dispatchers. In the mud, blood, and beer. Years that I'm not working Fourth of July. Fourth of July. <laughs> <laughs> and what did I know? Is, right? What about community mm-hmm. dispatch? So on this show, with the help of my guests, we will educate, empower, and support the heroes behind the headset. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here on Let's Talk Dispatch with me, Ashley, the Raspy Dispatcher. I actually just went to a Paramore concert last night, and... I just I know that being able to go to concerts and go do these things is a total privilege that that I'm I'm so lucky to have. But if you have not had a chance to go see music live, even if it's like small town outside, they haven't made it yet, do it. It's such an awesome experience. And um the the singer in Paramore was actually sick, so they rescheduled to last night and even sick they were rocking it. And I mean, just seeing someone have so much fun and like really live their hobby, their purpose, their talent is such a, it's so amazing. And I really think it's something we can learn from in our regular everyday lives. Go do the things that you really enjoy doing because it really does help uplift us in every other aspect of our lives. So that's my little two cents on that. Uh, For my guest today, I have two um heather blainley cto emd qa dispatcher since 2021 who also brought in a special addition to their center county 42 pu to be exact their first ever esa skunk in a dispatch center nugget hi hello hello (laughs) how are you fantastic how are you doing i am great we actually got to meet at um Nina, when we had our booth at Nina, you're walking around and came up to the booth and wanted to come on the show. So thank you so much for that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Nina, it was so much fun. It was the first oh time I'd, I'd had to go and yeah. it was a blast. I have oh, uh, an APCO right now, so I, I didn't really get to do APCO, but mm-hmm. I met so many amazing people at Nina. It, it yeah. was just a lot. Yes, and like my little spill about the Paramore concert and going out and seeing live music, go to don't go to go to a conference. You know, oh. they're so fun. Like even if you're going to your local chapters conferences, which are on the smaller scale, you learn so much. You meet so many different people, learn so many new things. I mean, it is really an experience if you're able to get out there and get to some of them. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Uh, Nugget and I actually uh, were invited to be speakers at the Indiana Nina next Ooh, month very cool yeah awesome yeah. so 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 cool well let's let's talk a little bit about you and how did you get into public safety um completely by accident i <laughs> lived in, yeah i lived in wyoming and i managed hotels in wyoming and south dakota mm-hmm. and um i moved from that area mm-hmm. out to southern indiana when i found out my father was sick um mm-hmm. came out here there was no need for hotel management in the area that we live in. So I got into retail and I was kind of sick and tired of that. Noticed that uh, Knox County Central Dispatch was hiring never in a million years that I think I'd actually get hired. I mean, I was 39, so almost 40 years old with no experience. Uh, But my interview went great and I shadowed and was like, you know, I think that this is something I can do. I wasn't scared off and Mm -hmm. just got right into it. That's amazing. You know, I feel like that is something that a lot of people, when they reach out to me, ask about like getting into the dispatch game, quote unquote, later in life, you know, like can someone who I've had someone who like, you know, I've been a teacher my whole career and I'm looking for a change or, and it is a job that I think anyone honestly can do at any point of their life, because we all in some aspect and you know, way have dealt with customer service. And I mean, in my opinion, that's kind of the root of what we're doing. Yeah. Other than the navigating emergencies, you know, like we're providing service to folks just happen to be in crisis. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And everybody's got some kind of experience that they can bring to it. You know, yeah. I mean, just experience. I mean, mm-hmm. at 39, 
so much life experience that some of the calls I took, I was able to empathize a little bit more than some of my other partners who maybe had never experienced what that caller themselves had experienced. Yeah. So, and that having that life experience really is so important and so valuable to the role. Cause like you said, if it's something I haven't experienced and we're working together, you know, I'm going to, and you can chime in and give me some, you know, feedback, some, something to say to that person to help, especially if we're talking with like a mental health crisis, you know, it, it's just so valuable. The tools that we bring in our own tool belts, just from the lives that we've lived. Exactly. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. He's so like antsy right now. Usually <laughs> when we're like, so like chill, but I think it's cause we're at home. Oh yeah. He's, he's like, like, I'm trying to get out of here. What is happening, mom? He's like, <laughs> why, why do I, it's still. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh what was goodness. it like? What was it like in the beginning for you when you first started? You know, you had never done it before. What What was that experience like for you? Uh, completely overwhelming. And honestly, I think if anyone tells me differently about their like first few months, they're they're full of it. Liars. Like, yeah, like there's so much technology that I had to learn and nothing is the same. So mm -hmm. just when I think, you know, okay, I got this. I took three domestic calls. A domestic call would come in just completely different. And I was like, and I, and I just thrown right back to, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And like, it's overwhelming because I, I've seen, unfortunately, a lot of the people that came into our center, they left after a short period of time because they felt the same way I did, where usually I pick up on things rather quickly mm -hmm. and I want to learn everything about everything. But no matter, it, it just felt like I wasn't catching on fast enough mm -hmm. um, until I finally realized it's not a catching on kind of a, a job. Everything mm -hmm. is changing. There's constantly moving parts and technology is advancing and we're always getting new programs. And so I had to learn pretty quickly to set that aside for myself. And that mm -hmm. in this job, it's not about perfectionism mm -hmm. because nothing is ever going to be the same ever with this job. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And I think that it's something if you're listening and you're like going through training and you're just like, man, like I can't, I can't get it. My trainer always has something to say about something. And it's so true because our training is like cutthroat because for, you know, months, weeks, whatever your system is set up in your center is like, there's an individual whose job is to just critique, 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 critique. And it's like every single call, there's usually a DOR where they're just typing, call came in for this, they did this, 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 this. And there's always feedback because that is the type of job we're in. Once you get off of training, you're not the best dispatch in the world. You know, it's not <laughs> like you're, you, you've done, you finished, you're not, you're always learning something. You're always gonna, be able to learn something, add something to your tool belt, do something. <laughs> do, hello, <laughs> 42 PU, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? <laughs> um, but you're always going to be able to do that. So if you're going through training, you're like, yo, I just, just hang in there because that is their job to critique you heavily. And then once you get through it, you're able to find your footing and like the skies open up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's definitely more about uh, confidence, making sure that you are confident versus, I mean, it's just, like I said, constantly moving parts. So as long yeah. as you are up to take on all of the new technology and everything, then mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about animals in the dispatch center and uh nugget here how did this all happen because i feel like i remember one of my co-workers um ended up having an esa with their their dog and i remember that being a lengthy process how, how did the son come into the picture <laughs> so actually um i've had him for three years now mm -hmm. uh, so i've had him before i was working over there and uh they all knew i had a skunk and it was mm -hmm. just he isn't an actual ESA. Like I don't have the doctor's note for him. He's mm -hmm. just always been comforting for me because normally he's not this rambunctious. <laughs> this, this is rambunctious. This yes. Is, 
this is high energy level for him, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I, I just, I like just reached out to my physician and said, Hey, I, I think I need to get on some kind of antidepressants. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like having him around me a lot more. Yeah. And I, asked my partners to start, Hey, would you mind if it's okay with our director? Can he come in during my shift? Hmm. You know, I'll make sure, you know, that he's, we set ground rules and, and everything. And I went to my director, my director was like, yeah, that's fine. We're a very small center. Yeah. One of my other partners would bring her dog in. Um, mm -hmm. So I started taking him in sporadically with me when I, when I was just having a day. And then some of my other partners started kind of like grabbing on to him and holding on. To him. <laughs> and yeah. we went to the County versus city, uh, um, Salvation Army bell ringing. It okay. was like, a, who can do better? Yeah. And I thought I brought nugget. Poor oh. city. They were, well, we won. <laughs> <laughs> and, the local newspaper had heard from somebody that she knew that saw us out at the bell ringing and reached out to my director. Mm. So the director invited her in to do an interview with us. And then a couple of the local television stations picked up on that. And then national television stations picked up on it. Um, right. Nugget has, he's been on Inside Edition. Ooh, okay, did, Nugget. <laughs> we did an and we did an interview live on Tucker Carlson. Oh my gosh, so freaking cool. And he, it, it, my my director was so thrilled. Like it gave us, it, it put our name out in the community. I mean, everyone yeah. knows 911, but we were able to actually get the attention of the people in our community who wanted to start inviting us to these like family events so that mm -hmm. we could educate people, you know, what to do if you accidentally call 911 and disconnected mm -hmm. phones can still call 911 and the things that mm -hmm. you would assume people understand but they don't mm -hmm. uh, so nugget kind of just became our our mascot first unofficial mm -hmm. and then official mascot mm -hmm. uh, and he's a skunk so i mean yeah. he draws attention of everybody that i mean even people who are like ugh, still want to pet him yeah and i'm like well scented and like okay I'm like yeah when are you say you got to pet a skunk like yeah i mean i know at least at the two police departments that i've worked at the only time i hear about skunks is like an email warning the officers like hey there's some skunks over there so like be careful when you get out your patrol vehicle you know? or like watch the canines because the skunks are around like you don't you don't get you don't get to pet them like that's not that is not a thing very often you know yeah yeah <laughs> But how did you come across Nugget? How did you folks meet? <laughs> I have I have, an, I have several adult kids. Um, my second child actually found him on Facebook through a breeder and then brought him home. Oh my Again. gosh! And, Facebook man, Facebook got uh, everything. <laughs> I know. So she found him um, through Indiana Skunk Rescue, and uh, hey baby, and I was like, no, we we don't know how to. So I was like, keep him away from me. I don't like I was mad at her. And he just kept like, I don't know if it was because I wanted nothing to do with him. Yeah. But I so he would actually seek me out, climb into my bed with me and like oh curl up. And, and after about six months, my daughter was like, you know, he really doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, so he just became my guy. That is so, hilarious. Several skunks um, yeah. that we got through Indiana Skunk Rescue. The other ones we had were all rehomed with us. They were mistreated and then surrendered mm -hmm. to her. Um, but we've had him since he was about eight weeks old. He was a baby when we got him. And mm -hmm. he is started socializing him from the time that I decided that I guess he was sticking around. Right? <laughs> and That's so funny. So I feel like your daughter's like watching you all on national TV at home. Like she didn't want that skunk. <laughs> <laughs> now you're over here on inside edition. <laughs> I love it though. Like he comes to work. Uh, well, one, he knows he trained himself. Um, domestic skunks will use puppy pads or litter boxes. Dude, you okay. can't fly. They'll use puppy pads. But at work, he trained himself to go outside. So we actually have like a little sign that says my skunk poops here. And he goes into like this little bushy area. 
That and is amazing. When he's at work, he gets special food. So like junk food that we all like to eat when we're at work, fast food <laughs> um, that he at home. So he yeah. is work with a good place. And he yeah. is so territorial. Like work is his spot. If you are yeah. in the center, you're fine. He's And he's not, he likes people, but yeah. he won't even think twice about anybody that's in the center, even if he's never even met him before. Because it's just, oh it's gosh. a spot now. Yeah. But I feel like this is such an amazing example of like how we bring our own stuff with us, right? Into our centers and how when you, I mean, honestly, live your true authentic self, like my scum <laughs> makes me happy and that's okay. And I'm, and I'm going to bring that to my work, you know, as long as it's okay with all, all my folks there and, and they allow you to be your authentic self as well you know, there's, there's acceptance. Um, it ends up making work a better place, even oh, in the sense of bringing a skunk to work, you know? Oh yeah. I remember asking my, my director when he told me he wanted me to start like going off and doing things like the events and he wanted me to like pick up the social media stuff. And I, I asked him, you want me to like dress up and kind of hide my tattoos. And I love him because he's like, no, why would I want you to do that? And I was like, you might want to watch what you say because I'm not sure. Yeah. Show up <laughs> you know, I've been looking for some more ink, so you know we're not going. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get a kick out of it because we've got like the little tattoos, nine one one tattoos. I'll be like, you know, I love giving tattoos out, and <laughs> always giggle, and they're like, we bet. Like, yeah. Oh <laughs> man, yeah. No, I mean, and it's true. I I think that you know, like I have tattoos, and I think a lot of people were getting into first responder roles, emergency services, police, dispatch, fire, you know, uh, historically tattoos weren't looked at as a great, great thing to have, but we're, we're becoming more accepting as, as a field, as individual departments to allowing the tattoos to come in and express ourselves. And, and it's, it's just another way to allow people to be people and, really connect with the community because the community out there got tattoos, you know, and <laughs> they're, they're going to want to hang out with the skunk regardless of what tattoos you have on your body. So it's amazing that your director is like, yeah, I want it because oh, yeah. we, we need to be ourselves in this tough role, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so what does a day for <laughs> Nugget look like? I mean, he comes into the center. Does he have like a bed? Like what is, What's the vibe for Nugget at his station? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, um, I have a bed that I'll bring in and we put it, I put it in the corner behind my desk. Um, mm. For some reason he likes that corner. I think it's because it's really cool back there. Mm. Um, but I, I have a crate that I bring him in and he's okay. only in that crate when, I'm, when we're at work. And it's open the whole time we're there so he can come and go. It's his safe spot. And he's got mm -hmm. their skunks are like ferrets with nests. So like they'll okay. drag things and they'll steal your clothes so he'll just kind of try and make his nest either in the bed or he'll make a nest in his crate what he'll is come he out stolen that you guys have found in there you're like i'm oh looking for this socks and jeans oh and pajama shorts pajama <laughs> pants and they get so mad like i'll clean out their nest and i'm like this is mine and this is mine and i threw the match the sock away because i thought the sock was gone and they <laughs> out and they get mad and they like stomp I clean out their, their nests and that is amazing. So like for days, they'll like just stick their tail up at me and sidewalk. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> but for some reason, they, they know the clean clothes. So if I leave our, our clean laundry basket anywhere for more than 10 minutes, they're dragging clean laundry. And I'm like, oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> you know, it's a plot twist when the, the county, the, the dispatch skunk is, is a thief. You know? I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> did, did Nugget go through backgrounds? Because. <laughs> so he can't climb and they can't like, they can't claw anything up. He's got, they've got massive claws, but they're, they're for digging. So they're not sharp at all. Mm. Um, so the, you have to like, the most I have to worry about with him at work is trying to get into our trash cans. <laughs> and that's I guess, if he's in a, a spunky mood, normally yeah. he's just like, I'm at work, I'm going to sleep. Mm -hmm. He knows when it's time to eat. And that's about it. 
<laughs> that is hilarious. So yeah. I'm sure everyone listening is like the big question. Do they, do they not, uh, what, do, what do they call it? I'm blinking right now. Um, so his spray, gland, spray. Yep. His scent gland, um, domestic skunks, their scent glands are removed when they're about two weeks old before we okay. even get them. Okay. And so he scented and he is neutered. So okay. no little baby anywhere <laughs> uh, but they actually um just a little psa i guess um the my skunks all came from a fur farm in iowa and the fur oh. farm uh, they use their pelts and they sell the the animals to the usda mm. to do research and animal skunk or indiana skunk rescue will get at least 20 of them a year from this fur farm and mm. adopt them out as pets yeah. so they take um, part of their scent glands are actually used <laughs> in perfumes. <laughs> oh, what in the world? Yeah, because of the oil that is in their scent gland. So that's when a, when an adult skunk spray picked around forever, it's because it's covered in oil. Yeah. <sighs> Wow. You know what? You learn something new every day. You know, there was <laughs> one of my coworkers, um, and now my fiance, to be honest, there's um, a face, uh, gosh, it's like snail, snail face care. And it's like snail snot. I don't know what the proper term is, but it's used, whatever the snails secrete. It's kind of like that Bugs. same. Yeah, they like, yeah. The, the, and they, people put it on their face now. Um I'm assuming not a large amount of it. I'm sure there's some essence of it in here, but yeah, that's like the vibe and they're using it for facial care and it's, it's a whole thing. So, you know, it does huh. not surprise me that when I'm spraying some smell good on me, that I'm probably <laughs> <laughs> got some skunk gland coming with it. Oh, the skunk. <laughs> yeah, all right. Like, that's all I can afford. You know, I'm a, I work for the city. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so amazing. <laughs> um, so do you remember any of your first calls for service or early calls when starting to be a dispatcher? You know, I don't really remember my first first few calls and I'm not sure why I mean I remember my very first call was an accidental call and I was relieved and then immediately <laughs> now I gotta go that oh, okay me. bye it's okay bye <laughs> yeah I got in the habit when I call them back or when they stay on the line and they say no emergency I'm like oh I'm so happy to hear there's no emergency right? <laughs> like yes thank you <laughs> but the first time I was kind of like left on my own on my own and there were only two of us working like I said we're a small center and it was storming and I was working overnight and my partner was on the call with the police department and there was some guy like I don't know what the background was on it but he was trying to get into the police department and they'd locked him out and so he called 911 I, I don't know why he thought that I was inside the police department so he's yelling at me and I'm trying to calm him down. And my partner's like, just keep him talking. And then just left me. And I was like, <laughs> this is like big mad. Like yeah. trying to break into a place where they're trying to figure out what they want to do. And you're just, just keep him talking. Keep him talking. So I did. Uh -huh. So I, um, I, I, can't, I was so proud of myself because I started asking about, his family, his kids, his wife was there and she would kind of seem like the calm one. So I'm like, Hey, talk to me. Let your wife talk to them. Like, just, just tell me what is going on. Yeah. And as soon as he, I wasn't in the police department, cause we're, we're not in the police department. We're mm -hmm. on our own. Yeah. He, he, a lot. So I was like, Oh, well, how many kids do you have? Oh, how old are them? Oh my gosh, just babies. Well, mm -hmm. what brought you to friends? Yeah. So I kept him and every time he'd start to yell, I'm like, no, 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 no talk to me. Tell me about your dog. Yeah. I have a skunk. Can I tell you about Nugget? <laughs> My partner, I'm looking at her and then she hangs up and I'm still over here. And I'm like, right? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do now? Like, and it all worked out. Like, uh, I mean, it, it, the guy immediately calmed down and he was so awesome. Cause he's like, you know, 
you're really good at your job. I'm like, thanks. I hung up and I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> that one sticks out to me an awful lot because it was the first time I was on my own and it was this massive thing where I had no idea, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it, it's a prime example of how in our jobs, most of the time we're working with like, 30% of the info. I mean, to be honest, like I only got what you're giving me. And at this point I got a, I got an upset guy and you're telling me they're aware of it, but they haven't quite figured out what they're doing with it yet. So now we're, we're tag teaming trying to help deescalate a, a situation that I don't really know the full situation to yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, it's not me. I'm not right. in the police yeah yeah oh, look at the uh, 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 i'm not there <laughs> yeah it's not not me it's not me i had all the time like they're like officer and i'm like oh, let me just move my gun over while my sitting it's poking me in my in my dispatch chair right now <laughs> like no no not an officer <laughs> <laughs> but but it's so true because I know, I, I would imagine, and I think we've all probably experienced frustration in um, working with our units and like handling calls and trying to get the most information. And for you, I think I think for me, like the, the best way to explain it is like, you get the call and the guy's like, there's blood everywhere. And you're like, there's blood everywhere. And you're telling the officers like, yeah, I get this there's blood everywhere. Someone, someone's hurt. And the officer gets there and they're like, it was a speck of blood on the wall <laughs> and you're just like what like how like how how does it go from there's blood everywhere to like a drop of nail polish you know what i mean like it <laughs> like what is happening but it happens so often so i know for for dispatch it's like we have to report what it is <laughs> What it is, right? I mean, I remember one time, this this isn't my story, but it was told to me in my academy. Um, they had like a like a verbal domestic, I think there might have been a restraining order, and she was calling her child's father was outside. And, you know, in the city I was working in, it's a high call volume. Being outside is a violation, but it's not high priority just yet, right? So it's not, we're, we're not flying. We're not pulling officers to go if we have no officers available. And so they're updating the call and just like, yeah, he's going to the trunk of his car. And he's like, going to the trunk of his car. And he's like, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's walking to the, walking to the door, walking to the door. Mm, okay. You know? And then all of a sudden they hear like a pop on the, she's like, what was that? And he's like, he just saw it through the door, hit my cousin in the leg. And she's like, ah, you know. <laughs> and it's like, you have to report what's happening, even if you're like not necessarily believing them, because you never know what's actually gonna happen or go- happening, you know? Because we're not just switching, they're like, okay, he has a gun. And because they just didn't believe her because she was so mellow. Like, yeah, yeah he just get out the car. And you're like, and getting his gun out of the car because you're just so calm that this guy got a gun. And then you hear the shot. And you're like, oh, good thing I was typing it. He's a gun because he, he had a gun. <laughs> but yeah, you know, we get it all the time. Because I think I need that. Right? <laughs> like what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's, it's really crazy out there. I mean, I, I was asked at like a family get together like, what like what is your takeaway from doing this job and it's just like people are crazy like the world <laughs> the world is wild i guess is a better way to say it the world is wild and do not be surprised when you see the wild out there in the world and just know like you do your best to shelter yourself from it but it's going to be out there don't stop living your life because the world's crazy you know like it, it's gonna it's gonna be what it is and all you can do is be vigilant and continue to, to you know live your life because people people are living theirs just just the way they want to live them <laughs> yeah <laughs> with that being said what advice would you give someone who's considering a career in dispatch um 
definitely do research, um, maybe listen to some calls before you go. I mean, you can find them anywhere. Um, like imagine how you're going to feel listening to that and not being able to do much of anything shadow hundred percent. If, if they let you shadow shadow, um, I sat and watched for about four hours. I was in there. Um, and it was busy while I was in there. Like I said, small center. So it was, it just so happened to be busy while I was in there. Um, but we've seen, I've seen people come in and shadow and then immediately be like, yeah, this isn't for me. Um, and it's, you just, they waste your time, but you don't, you don't really want to get in there and go through all this training and then be like, Ooh, I don't know if I can. And emotions, emotions have nothing to do with it. I used to say I'm too emotional. I used to cry at commercials and movies. Oh, that's like, me. Thousand percent. <laughs> every time I'm going to cry. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 oh. with the baby balloons, rockets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My fiance but, makes fun of me all the time. I'm like, I'm a right. crier. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay. I don't think I could do this. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. it, it's completely completely different. And it's not that you're unemotional. It's just a little easier to check yourself. Um, so definitely make sure that you talk to, you know, you research it and maybe even just reach out to people on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I refuse to get back on Facebook. <laughs> but reach out to people and, and ask them, like, if you, if you had a chance to do it all over again, would you? Um, and don't give up this isn't the kind of job where you're going to catch on like that. You're just not. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not just my experience, but from what I've seen from the people we've had, you know, we've hired. And then that was the main reason why these guys left is they were like, I'm used to picking things up quickly mm -hmm. and I'm not picking this up. So I don't think I ever will. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just not it. And if you're 39 or 40, you can still, you can still do it. That's right. <laughs> Because we need more dispatchers, okay? We need them. Yes. Come try it out. <laughs> yes, we do. And it's just the community, it's such a, a, a mentally, like, it's such a strong community. Mm -hmm. And I have to say the community of women that I've mm -hmm. met since I've started, like, going to the Nina conference and yeah. uh, it's fantastic. It's mm -hmm. mental health positive um, and I, it took this job and I guess maybe my kids being adults for me to finally put my mental health first yeah. because I was like, Oh, how can I be most efficient at my job if I'm struggling from anxiety or depression myself? Mm -hmm. And so first time I put that on the, you know, front burner for me. So this job or, you know, being a dispatcher, it's, not a job it sounds so cliche but it's not a job like it's it's a life choice it's a career i mean it's something that i want to do for the rest of my life and i want to continue to grow at it and i think that if you if somebody who's looking into it gets past that first holy cow i don't think i can do this i think they're going to feel the exact same way and they're going to be so glad like for themselves mm -hmm. that they've done because there are calls that I've taken, you know, no music on and you're driving on your way home, like windows down, no music, complete silence. Mm -hmm. And I get home and I'm like, I took that call and I survived it. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it sucks, but it's like, I survived that call. Yeah. So then you call where somebody's like, oh yeah, my cat got stolen. And you're like, <laughs> really? <laughs> That cat just out there living their best life. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> or I have one call where somebody's like, there's a cat in my yard. I'm like, okay, does the cat have a gun? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you so want true. to do <laughs> So uh, it happens so often. And I think, I think it's true. I think, you know, you have to, you have to really do like some self, self-reflecting, right? It's like, where am I at in my, my personal life? And you know, um, we will be exposed to trauma. Um, and you know, we bring our own trauma to the job as well. Um, and we all handle our trauma differently. So it is definitely figuring out if, if it is a balance for you. Um, you gotta see this. <gasps> Let's see nugget. 
Oh, what's happening? Oh. oh. Hi, Nugget. He was laying on his back. Oh, I was like, whose pajamas is that? Did you see his pajamas? Yeah. <laughs> my son's. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. So freaking. I was crazy. hoping to get him. He was laying on his back with his feet up in the air. But <laughs> he doesn't really catch him cute. You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> Mom, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh my gosh. But uh, Heather Nugget. Thank you so much for, A, coming up to Nina, meeting me, having, you know, making this connection. You know, it's one of the reasons we're trying to get out to some of these uh, conferences is to meet more folks and, you know, get more people um, onto the show and listening to the podcast. So you, I feel like you're a proven uh, <laughs> a person to the theory. So thank you so much for Oh, well, thank you. Out. This has been so much fun. I really do appreciate it. I really, really do appreciate it. And it was great meeting you at Nina. And mm -hmm. I said, everybody that I've met was just so fantastic. Phenomenal. Awesome. So, thank Amazing. you. Amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Um, I'm going to kick you out and I'll be right back with you. Okay. Sounds good. All right, everybody, that was another amazing episode here on Let's Talk Dispatch. Heather, again, thank you so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you so much for coming out, bringing Nugget uh, with you, and more importantly, just being your authentic self in your center and letting that create an awesome environment for you and your coworkers to work in with Nugget and having that extra relief and cuddles at work. It really does go a long way for us to be able to just be ourselves at work and bring our skunks to work. You know, that should be a new movement we all create. Uh, so of course, like, subscribe, tell a friend. Until next time, everybody, stay raspy. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let's Talk Dispatch, a Raspy Dispatcher production. If you like the podcast, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, leave a five-star review, and of course, tell a friend. If you want to be a guest, head to the raspydispatcher.com and check out our additional resources. Until next time, stay raspy, everybody.